Today I'm in Fairfield, Iowa, famous for being the home of Winnebago, and I am at a steam thresher show. Behind me, all the steam tractors are warming up. Let's go check it out. First one we have is a really big case. You can see it steers by a winch by changing the direction that this chain gets pulled. It changes the direction that you steer the tractor. You can see all the steam oil dripping down from the engine. I can feel the heat from here. It says this one is 110 horsepower. But I'm sure this has the traction and pulling power of a much larger comparable tractor today. Next to the case is a Rumley. You start out with wood and then you switch over to coal. I see. It takes a hot fire to get coal to burn. But for just, uh, coal burns the best when you're under load because it has a forced draft and gets the air through it so it burns cleaner. Without a uh, load then it, you don't get the draft through. This next tractor has gigantic wheels on it. All of these tractors have been sitting here for a while warming up. There's a ladder here on the side so you can climb up and get to the various valves and work on things. Next we have a Nicole Sh and Shepherd. Of course, a lot of the names here do not exist anymore. We have another Nichols and Shepherd. This one is from 1923. Now we'll move on to some of these smaller steam tractors. Next 
Next we have a Minneapolis. The owner just told me that this is the oldest Minneapolis still in existence. This example is from 1893. Next to it we have another Minneapolis. Another Minneapolis. Another Rumley. This one is a 1914. And last in line here, we have an Avery. This one's pulling a water wagon behind it. You can see the fire peeking out there. They're warming it up. This Avery is a 1908. This one has a steering shaft that comes down to a series of gears. Big hook on the front. All right, so what we got here is a Minneapolis Mini 20. Uh, this engine was built back in 1924, so it's almost 100 years old. Um, right here, uh, there's different ways to drive these engines, what but there's built? a lot of, what? What year was it built? 1924. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of different ways to, a lot of these engines drive the same way, so right here, this changes your direction of your engine. You push it forward, the engine's going to run backwards, you push it backwards, the engine's going to run forward. Um, this right here is your clutch, so on that wheel you can see there's two arms that stick out, and on those arms are a piece of wood. You pull this, those arms push those pieces of wood up against the wheel, and this connects it to the engine. And this is what helps the engine actually drive like go forward. This right here is the throttle. Now uh, these engines, they're very touchy. You could just bring it up that much and you might be running too fast. So one trick we use is we kind of tap these forward or tap them back to try to get the right speed. Right here, uh, if the piston head of the engine gets too much water in it, this allows us to get water out of it when it's pulled back and then when we push forward, it closes these little uh, openings. Um, if the piston head gets too much water in it, what could happen is you, the piston head basically could explode off the piston. And that's your basics on how to drive a steam engine. Um, up there, you do have your steam gauge, um, and engines have a pop-off, and that's when the emergency relief valve will pop off. This one's 125, 
that Case 110 over there, that's about 150. I know that because I ran that at Steam School this year. Right here you have your water level, and if this ever breaks on you, you turn off water first because water uh, is more dangerous when it's open compared to steam, so you turn off water and then turn off the steam. But uh, this lets us know how much water is in the boiler, and we try to keep it to three-fourths full at most of the time. Our injectors are right over here. With this engine, you turn this wheel, you open this, and this container right here, this is what holds your water. Uh, this one right here. Okay. Um, and you turn on the steam. The steam sucks the water into the boiler by creating suction, and that's how we inject water into the boiler when we're running. Uh, we also do have a pump on this engine. It's towards the front. It's kind of hard to show it because it's kind of in the parts of the piston and all that. But that's kind of your basics of how to run a steam engine. Is your YouTube channel about steam? Uh, a little or? bit. My YouTube channel mainly focuses on, uh, focuses on uh, agriculture and the agricultural industry. Um, you can see it on Jake to the Ag Guy on YouTube. I'm also on TikTok and Instagram as well. We've got a stationary steam engine. It's connected by a belt over to a little merry-go-round. Any steam engine that three things you gotta balance are between mainly water level, pressure. And then your firebox, your fuel, and your airflow. Um, starting at the bottom, damper for the uh, airflow. This is an updraft, so all the air just goes through that hole up to the tube and up the top. So this controls the amount of airflow. Firebox, lower foot of wood or coal, just lay on either. There's tubes inside of the boiler. There's 32 inch diameter tubes. Uh, I forgot the length, but it's you know, 38 inches long. And then the culminates comes out the top. Um, the water level you can see through a sight glass or through the tricox. If something happens to the sight glass, you can isolate that. You can still tell your water level. So uh, up the top, of course, you've got your pressure gauge to tell you what pressure is at. For modern requirements, I have a, uh, an ASME pressure gauge in the back, but what's rather rare for this thing is what's in front is the weighted arm pressure relief. That is actually the original pressure relief that was originally installed on this uh, boiler. I, the guy that sold it to me, uh, when I asked him about it, he went out in the snow and kicked it up out of the snow and found it and sent it to me. The uh, engine is a uh, four horsepower, 250 RPM. 4 inch diameter, 6 inch stroke. The, uh, I wasn't sure what year this was built. I know it's built by the Murray Iron Works out of Burlington, Iowa. But I found a catalog in the Smithsonian Institute that shows dated 1895 this very engine. Except with a couple of modern upgrades. So that's why I'm assuming 1894 or earlier. The governor, I found of all places eBay, and it happens to be the right model, right year governor, dated June 20th, 1893. The oiler, it, once I found that picture, I knew what oiler it needed, and I was able to find that. So, uh, piece by piece, this is pretty much as it looked when it was brand new in 1894. Okay, these are the injectors. This is how you put water at atmospheric pressure into a boiler at 100 PSI without a mechanical pump. It uses a couple of venturis and steam through a venturi that creates high speed that then creates a vacuum, sucks water up, and then injects it back into the tank. It does the injection, it also warms the water up too so you're not shocking the boiler with uh, cold water. And per requirements today, you have to have two methods of putting water in the boiler, so I've got two injectors. The original picture I have shows one, but in that same general configuration.
bring my water level up. And on the steam, blows out the steam at the bottom until I get a good dry steam. Got to put some water. And there I'm starting to put water in. But as you might notice, my pressure is starting to drop because I'm putting cooler water in. And my injector may stop working before I get it totally full. We'll see. Let's see if the merry-go-round works. Oh, there it goes. Those little notches to put it in place. Let the kids ride around. These here are scale models of the larger steam tractors. But as you can see, they are fully working models. You're wondering what that noise is? Belt just slipped off. Now we have a one-third scale. This one was built about 10 years ago. It's not just steam tractors here this weekend. There are internal combustion tractors here as well. Here's a Minneapolis that looks like those steam tractors but has an internal combustion engine in it instead. This guy, this guy might be starting this one, turning the flywheel to get the engine turned over. This is an old internal combustion that ran on kerosene originally, but he's running it on gasoline today. Originally, you would first get this to fire on gasoline. Once it's warmed up, you would switch over to your kerosene.
Shaft uh, grinder, so it's kind of like the sanding wheel or the bench grinder. It just gets thrown off uh, the jack shaft. Let's see what jail was like in 1912. It's just a metal box in a brick building. This is a heck of an art display. Also here this weekend, they are celebrating the 100th anniversary of the International Harvester Corporation, which made both the International Scouts and a line of big trucks, as well as tractors and Cub Cadet lawn tractors. This one has a, another axle added to the back of it. Yeah. 
that? Here we have a steam tractor running an old threshing machine. These tractors aren't here just for show, they actually use them as well.
I had a great time today at the Steam Thresher Show. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and let me know that you liked it. I'll see you next time.